Hello and welcome to another episode, the fourth episode of Action Script Tutorial. Now what we want to do instead of have arrow keys is we're going to change it today. We're going to change it from arrow keys. Let's delete that. We're going to change it from arrow keys to following the mouse. Now if you want it to follow the mouse, all you have to do is set its X value to the mouse value. So we used on enter frame before and this is its syntax on enter frame equals function then have the brackets and stuff have a semicolon at the very end don't know why it's kinda different the script contains syntax errors that's weird well I can tell you why it shows you right here statement must appear with an on or on clip event handler so what this means is that when you click on the clip and it's not on the timeline, like it's just on the clip, the script has to be on an on or an on clip event. And we're going to use on clip event because on clip event has its own enter frame function. So here we are. We have an enter frame right on this clip. And what we can do is make its x equal to the x mouse. There's a problem doing with just x mouse though, because it's making its x relative to its own x mouse. It's really complex, but this is what results in it. it a flashing mess of insanity here, if you notice. Um, so what we need to do is we need to do root to x mouse which makes its x mouse and y mouse very absolute and it makes it follow just like that and it collects the balls or the coins and does everything it did because we made our script so awesome well there's a problem doing it this way I'm gonna make a pretend wall right through the middle like pretend if I hit that wall I lose so what I can easily do is right click and go to the other side of the wall. There was no hit test and I didn't lose. And get all the coins and you know and but there is a way around this. There's actually many ways, but the simplest way is by going X is doing a little um a formula that I found and I've learned over the years too. We do X plus equals which adds whatever here is to the uh, x already. And we do root dot x mouse minus x. And we do divided by 5. The lower this number is, the faster it will follow the mouse. The higher it is, the slower. You know what I did wrong? I put x there. <laughs> okay, now it should follow it, right? And so now I can't just right click and jump it over here, it has to hit that. Very simple. So that's a really cool thing you can use now, now that you're educated. Now another thing that kind of bothers us right now is that we have to count up the coins and we have to name them all coin 1, coin 2, coin 3, coin 4. When we can do this all using script. Hmm. So when we clip, click on a coin, you can have actions right on it, which every time you put a new coin on the screen, you have to put the same actions for every coin. Or we can just double click and add scripts to its timeline, which would change all of the coin's timeline. So what we do is we would make an on enter frame, or we could, but that's not what we're doing. Um, so first of all, we'd have to add one to the coins in the root. So root dot max coins plus plus. That'll add one to the coins in the root. You can see that it's already four, so we can change it to zero, because they'll automatically count themselves up. Because every coin that's on the root will do this script. Root dot max coins plus plus. We can also name it too without having to have to name it individually each one coin one coin two coin three 
So we can say name equals coin plus root.max coins. Coins. And this tells the name to be changed to coin and then plus whatever root.max coins is. Since this isn't on an enter frame, it's not going to make every coin coin plus the max coins. Whatever the coin, the max coins is when this first does its script, it'll make it um, coin plus whatever it is. So each coin will have an individual name with numbers counting up to the max, all the coins that are on this root. So when this runs, this will be coin one, coin two, coin three, coin four, even if I didn't individually name them. I'll show you. Let's say I delete all those, add some coins that don't have any names, their instance name is nothing, and I'm just adding quite a few here. Here we are. They collected just like they are, they were supposed to. I remember when I had four coins, it wins. Or you win. Well, when I go to here, it won't win because the max coins was also changed. So I have to get all the coins to win. And our script does that all for us. We could have infinite little things on this screen. We had a really fast computer. Yes, infinite definitely works. And we can collect them all. And once we get all of them, it'll go on. And that's beauty about scripting is because you can do that. You can do whatever you really want. I know Flash is really limited to security, like it can't open your disk drive and tell you to input a disk or else restart the computer. And <laughs> But Flash is really good for games and animations and apps and stuff. So we have this awesome script like that. I think we need to change a couple more things though. I think we need to make it so that, yeah, I think we should make it so that we have a, a, a barrier that we can't hit or else it will go to the, it'll go to the fail screen. So we'll make a quick block that if we hit it, then we get sent to the fail screen and we lose the game for there then you know the game this game so I'll press f8 and name it wall not walk wall so our walk right there we can do the same exact thing we did with coins we can actually copy its script the coin script right there we can go to wall and paste that script, max walls. And we can we can add all this script again in the root too. We can change all the script. We can add all the script so that we can easily change wall to be exactly like coins, except when you hit it, it sends you to the fail screen. So we can copy this for loop, which we made so that. When the ball hits the coins, um, the coins are added, tells you how many coins you have, and it makes the coin disappear. Well, we can make that same script right here, except change all the coins to walls. So wall num max walls wall num wall num wall and even though it seems like it's taking a while it's a lot faster than coming up with the script all ourself because we're more awesome scripters and no we don't want to have a variable named walls and add it to it we just want to simply send it to the fail screen so go to and st stop fail and we still have to make a fail screen, so we'll do that in just one second. To make a fail screen, just make a new frame. Make this text box say, fail dog. 
click on here, go to the properties, name it fail. Of course, you can't fail on this because we don't have any walls. There we have it. So, if we add a wall, I can show you that our script should work. If we hit any of them, it goes to the fail screen. Obviously, I have an error in my script somewhere. Oh yeah, I added an S here on accident. Walls. Now the name is wall and it will and it will send me to the fail screen. <laughs> and that is a huge addition to our game and I think that will make our game so much cooler. And we can now add some obstacles in our way that we can't go past. And if you think this is a little choppy and slow right now, and you want to make your game a lot cooler, then all you can do, all you have to do is go to the properties, click on the background, change the frame rate to 30 FPS. Now once you start getting to the huge FPS, there's going to be enter frames all over, and every frame, millions of things are going to happen. Um, that's when you start getting lag, and it, it kind of gets disappointing if you have a lot of lag. So here is our new game. It looks a lot more smooth. And it's it's really cool now. You we've made a game. This is fantastic. And please in, implement any of the script here. It's you can make your own game and you can be proud of it. And the last thing we're going to do is we're just going to make a simple button that when we release it it sends us to the main screen which our main screen is going to I just copied the frame it's gonna say welcome one and all to a game of joy And this is the play button, the begin button. We want to kind of where the, the ball is so that we don't have it right in the middle. And when we click on it, the ball is going to go to the middle and it's going to lose because it hits the wall. So we want it over here, by the over here. Or we can just start the game off with the ball in the very center. Oh, and I forgot to, uh, I forgot to name the uh, frame label main which stands for main menu or main screen or something. Welcome one and all to a game of joy. When you click on the button, we want it to go to the next frame. So click on it, goes to the next frame, we're playing the game. And we also want it to stop on this frame. So you click on the frame and type stop and it will stop on this frame click on the button and it will go to the next frame on this frame it has all the game stuff and then when you complete the game it goes to the secret area and if you fail it goes to the fail area and when you click on the button it goes back to the main area pretty awesome and in the next video we're going to be adding a second level